इतने बड़े बड़े राजा थे या साधारण व्यक्ति भी पचास वर्ष होने के बाद ही में संसार छोड़ और एकांत रूप में वन में जा करके भगवान का भजन करते वे अपने भोगों भोगते भी हैं निंदा भी कर दोनों करते हैं इसी कारण विषय संग्राह नियत भाव Last night, from the six stages of Anisida Bhajan, we heard Uttar Mai, where the Saraki enters devotion by taking shelter of the figure of Gurudev and taking Diksha. Then, after one or two days of Bhajan, he thinks, I become a pure devotee. But then, upon not being able to understand the deeper tattvas concerning Bhakti, he becomes depressed in his Bhajan becomes, let me say, slackened. Then comes the next stage, Vyudhavikalpa. Sometimes he cannot understand, should I be married or should I be sannyasi? That way his mind is oscillating between acceptance and rejection. This also goes with the limbs of devotion. Sometimes he performs Nam Sekitam when he hears the glories of Nam Kitam. But then when he hears the glories of Shravanakya Bhakti, hearing that he becomes absorbed in that, or when he hears of the glories of Atmana Vedanam, like Bali Maharaj, then he takes up that, then he hears Archam, then he performs that, his mind is not steady. Then comes Vishaya Sangara, fighting with the, the desire to enjoy materials, the objects of material enjoyment. The Jiva has come to this world and covered by the mind and six senses. Therefore, to control the mind and six senses and to absorb them in the service of Bhagawan is very, very difficult. How can you achieve an object which is the east when you are walking towards the west? How can you achieve Bhagawan when you are engaging yourself in sense enjoyment? They are completely opposite. They are diametrically opposed. In such a stage, the devotee knows or by engaging in material enjoyment, my ability to perform bhajan will be destroyed. There again and again he tries to overcome material enjoyment, but he fails. Thus, by force, he is engaged in material enjoyment. Therefore, <coughs> he enjoys objects of sense enjoyment, but meanwhile, according to the verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Yadatu Shoreo, even while enjoying these objects of material enjoyment, he detests himself. He criticizes himself. Thus, while enjoying, he knows these sense enjoyments are the object, are the, these sense enjoyments will cause unlimited suffering to me, but still he is forced to enjoy them. Thus, while enjoying them, he laments bitterly for his fallen condition. Thus, sometimes he defeats the objects of enjoyment, sometimes he is defeated by them. Such a sadak, he is detached from the process of karma and he has shraddha or faith in the process of devotion. He knows perfectly well that material enjoyment gives unhappiness, suffering and misery. He knows that material enjoyment appears like happiness but in the end it appears like poison. But still, he is forced to engage in, the, in acts of sense enjoyment. Even though he knows my mother, even though the mother and father know by marrying, I could not be happy. And even though they could understand that their parents by marrying could not be happy either, still they force their own children to marry. And, they, and even though they notice themselves, they marry themselves. <clears throat> Thus he knows this is actually the fruit of my, this is the uh, result of my fruit of activities. 
Thus, while enjoying the object of his senses, he criticizes the result of his past karma and criticizes his enjoying propensity. He thinks, I am most unfortunate that I am engaged in these activities. So such a person who knows this, they will take a vow, I will never marry. And those who are married, they will have no attachment. They remember the verse that Sri Krishna spoke to Arjuna. Sarva dharma paritaja mamikam saranam raja hamkam sarva papa vyo maksishyami masucha. That even if one who understands this will never marry, and one who is married will give up all attachment and understand that the one and only duty of the human form of life is to render devotional service to Sri Krishna. In his commentary in the Srimad Bhagavatam to this verse, Sri Vishnu Chakwari Thakur describes this stage of devotion. He knows that this material enjoyment is the cause of suffering, but he cannot renounce it. Thus, he criticizes himself and detests himself. <coughs> that time, within his mind, he makes a very firm promise. If my attachment is increasing or decreasing, if my offenses will take me to hell or not, if I experience millions of obstacles or not, doesn't matter what happens, I will never leave the practice of devotional service. One who thinks like that, that person can enter into the kingdom of Bhakti. Thus, within his mind, the Sadak understands these material desires are anatas or unwanted things. They are unfavorable for devotion. But he remembers that previously many sadhus like Bharat Maharaj and other rishis, as well as ordinary persons, they completely left material life at the age of 50 and engaged in bhajan. Go for it. सुनते हैं कीर्तन सुनते हैं 
वो मुक्त हो जाते हैं और मुक्त होने पर उनको बहुत आदर करते हैं सम्मान देते हैं बहुत सी चीजें खाने पीने पहनने के लिए और भी जितनी चीजें हैं सब चीजें उनको दे देते तब वो किसी को कहते हैं तरंग तरंग ही नहीं जैसे नदी में तरंग आती है ऐसे ये पक्षी में तरंग आती है यदि कोई उसी लाभ पूजा प्रतिष्ठा आदर सम्मान में ही डूब गया और जो चीजें मिलती हैं उसको अपने भोग में लगाने लगा तो किया बहुत ही कठिन चीज है बहुत चेष्टा करके ऊपर उठा था और जब आदर मिलेगा स्त्रियां आने लगेंगी और लोग सब आने लगेंगे फल मूल कंध खाने की पहनने की भोग करने की और जितनी चीजें हैं सब जैसे हम लोगों के पास में आती हैं किंतु हम लोग अपने नहीं भोग कर सावधान रहकर गुरु वैष्णव के चरणों में वैष्णव को भगवान को ये सब अर्पित करके दे देते हैं जो अत्यंत आवश्यक है वो भी भगवान का भोग समझ करके उसको यदि उसमें कोई नहीं हुआ सह नहीं सका उस आदर को तो वो पतित हो जाता है बहुत से लोगों को देखा है भजन करते करते ऊपर उठे और फिर स्त्रियों का ऐसा आकर्षण के वो संन्यास भी छोड़ दिया और गृहस्थ बन गए गृहस्थ क्या बन गए वो क्या बन गए इसलिए ही सबसे सावधान रहना चाहिए स्त्रियों को भी सावधान रहना चाहिए पुरुषों को भी सावधान रहना चाहिए इस प्रकार से रह करके भजन करना चाहिए <coughs> then comes the fourth stage, Niyamakshama, inability to follow rules of devotion. In this fourth stage, the Sadak has already crossed the previous three stages, Utsanamaya, Ganatana, and Visaya Sangha. He has crossed those previous three stages and now come to Niyamakshama. Fourth, this is the fourth stage. Then, at that stage, he develops, he develops and he develops some greed for bhajan. He has crossed the previous stages and now he begins to make some firm promises, some call. Today, from today, I will chant one lakh harinam. I will give pranam to all the Vaishnavas, to all the places and devotees in the Holy Dham, like Jagannath Puri, Vrindavan and Navadri. I will always engage in Vaishnav Seva. I will stay away from materials. I will not discuss with them. But what happens? Some disease comes, some headache, some important works come, and they present obstacles, and he cannot finish his, he cannot fulfill his promises. Therefore, the difference between this Visaya Sangara and Niyamakshama is this. And in the stage of Visaya Sangara, fighting with material desires, he cannot give up material enjoyment. But in the stage of Niyamaksha, he can give up material enjoyment, but cannot completely follow the prescribed rules and regulations. Therefore, the last stage, Chalangara Gini. In this stage, he develops some taste for the cultivation of the limbs of Bhakti. He begins to speak Harikata very nicely. He can sing, play Madanga, with bulging biceps. That time, many people become attracted to him. Oh Maharaj, you're so nice speaking, you sing so well. That time they begin offering many types of food, drink and clothing. And then he begins to enjoy these things, thinking this is bhakti. But actually this is not bhakti, this is like waves on the top of the river. Just like the river is there, but some waves are there, the waves are not really the river. In the same way, the love, puja, and pratishta, the name and fame, wealth, and worship that comes with bhakti is not really bhakti. And what happens? 
The Sadak misuses all these things for his own enjoyment. Especially women will become attracted. Uh, women will become attracted, fall at their feet and offer them so many things. At that time, what should we do? Could have said, I've seen so many hundreds and hundreds fall from this stage. Because instead of taking those things and offering them to Hari Guru Vaishnav, he begins to enjoy these things. Even we have seen that sannyasis, they enjoy these things and they fall from sannyas and become grihastas. Thus they become vantasis, the one who eats his own vomit. <coughs> Therefore Guru said to always try to be like Gurudevas. Always take these things and that much which is necessary, understanding this is the prashad of Bhagavan, one should use it in a proper manner. And what is extra, or, you know, everything actually should be offered to Hari Guru Vaishnava. Hare Krishna, so we are leaving after breakfast for Giriraj Govardhan. On the wall there, just before the entrance, you can see from there, all your names are there, the bodies who have registered. Where is your Dharmashala or your room? You can find your name right there. Then one announcement for those who carry money with them, valuables, uh, there are Thieves, yeah, in Vrindavan there are thieves, we know that. So sometimes they come in our Sangha and they take your money or other valuables, it happens. At any moment it can happen. So don't make friendship with unknown persons. If you see anyone unknown or sus suspicious, report it. Yeah, we will try our best to keep them outside, but still they enter. And we just want to warn you, be very, very careful with anything. Abhi hum log nasta prasad le karke, abhi prasad tayyar hai. Sabhi log prasad le karke, bus mein baithe.